Okay, so get ready because we are going deep today. Oh, I like the sound of that already. Right, like cosmically deep, multiversal, the whole shebang. I'm intrigued. Let's do it. We're diving into a story someone sent in, and it's a wild piece of speculative fiction, let me tell you. Okay, hit me with it. So it all starts with these two beings. Their names are Rama and Dhamma. Rama and Dhamma. Yeah, and... They exist outside of time and space. Okay, outside of time and space, now that is a concept. So it's mind-bending, right? Yeah. And the story says they were born from, like, civilizations so advanced they make anything we can imagine look like, you know? Primitive. Exactly. Right. Like, they make our most ambitious sci-fi look like, I don't know, like a child's drawing or something. I mean, yeah, if you're talking about beings that exist outside time and space, we're probably pretty primitive in comparison. Right. But here's the thing. They're kind of obsessed with us, with humanity. Really? Even these super advanced beings? Tell me more. Yeah, it's like, even on this grand cosmic scale, we're still the interesting ones, at least to them. I guess everyone loves a good coming-of-age story. Right. But it's interesting, you know, because they have very different ideas about what to do with us, about how much they should interfere. Oh, so, like, is it a hands-on or hands-off approach to guiding humanity. I can see how that would lead to some interesting disagreements. Oh, totally. And it's a classic debate, right? Even here on Earth. Like, do we step in and try to help or do we let things play out even if it means someone might get hurt? Exactly. It's like yeah. the whole give a man a fish versus teach a man to fish yeah. dilemma, but on a much larger scale, I guess. Totally. So Rama, he's all about nurturing our potential, especially this idea of us merging consciousness and AI. Okay. Now that's something that always gets me thinking especially now in 2024 when AI is, well, it's everywhere. It's huge, right? And it makes you wonder, are we on the edge of creating something that could be more than human? It really does. And this whole idea of merging with technology, it's like science fiction is becoming reality right in front of us. Absolutely. And Rama seems to think we're on the verge of something really incredible. He does. But what about Dhamma? What's their take on all of this? So Dhamma, they're a bit more, I guess you could say, cautious about our potential, maybe even a little wary. Interesting. So we've got the optimist and the cynic. Yeah, kind of. And Dhamma's worried that if they interfere too much, it'll mess with our free will, you know. I see. So it's like, even if we could guide humanity towards some kind of utopia, would it be worth it if we took away their ability to choose their own path. It's a tough one, right? And it's not just about free will. It's also about the possibility of us messing things up, making the wrong choices. Well, we humans do have a bit of a track record for that, don't we? Right. And in the story, those wrong choices, they don't just affect us. They could have consequences for, like, the entire multiverse. Okay, now we're getting into some seriously high-stakes stuff. Oh, yeah. We're talking cosmic-level consequences here, but that's what makes it so interesting, right? It does. It's like, how do you even begin to grapple with decisions when the fate of not just your own world, but countless others, hangs in the balance? Exactly. It's like the ultimate what-if scenario. Yeah, it really is. And it makes you think. Even our smallest actions could be rippling out through the multiverse, creating entirely new timelines. That's the idea, right? That every choice we make could be splitting off into infinite possibilities. Okay, now my head is officially spinning. Mine too, but that's what's so great about a deep dive like this. You got that right. It's enough to make you question everything you thought you knew about, well, existence. Exactly. But before we get too lost in the multiverse, I think we should probably unpack this idea of branching timelines a little more. Yeah, let's try to untangle that a bit. It's a big one. Branching timelines, right? So where do we even begin with that? Well, I mean, it's not just about the timelines branching off. It's also about what happens in those timelines, right? True. And this story doesn't shy away from the messier possibilities. Yeah. Not at all. Not even a little bit. And it gets pretty intense when you start talking about, like, the fate of humanity. Well, that's where Rama's idea of an apocalypse as a teaching moment comes in, right? Right. A teaching moment. Can you imagine? It's heavy stuff, for sure. It makes you think, though, right? Like... Do we really learn and grow from our mistakes if we don't face any real consequences? It's a question a lot of people have asked throughout history. I think about all the myths and stories about civilizations falling. Maybe there's something to that cycle of destruction and rebirth. It's like, do we need that kind of fire to forge something new and better? Maybe, but it's a bit much for me, to be honest. This whole idea of a cosmic being orchestrating a near apocalypse just to teach us a lesson. I know what you mean. It feels a little, I don't know, like too much tough love. It does make you wonder about free will too, doesn't it? Like if beings like Rama and Dhamma are out there pulling strings, 
how much agency do we really have? Right. Are we actually making our own choices or are we just puppets in some grand cosmic play? It's enough to keep you up at night. That's for sure. And the story doesn't really offer any easy answers. No, it doesn't, which I think is part of what makes it so interesting. You know, Mm -hmm. it's forcing us to confront these really big, uncomfortable questions about free will, about progress, about what it even means to exist. It does. And just when you think you've got a handle on the whole Rama and Dhamma debate, the story throws another curveball, infinity. Oh, yeah. Infinity. Talk about a plot twist. Right. Out of nowhere, we have this whole other entity to deal with. So who is Infinity? What makes them so important in all of this? Well, the story describes Infinity as this entity born from the merging of humanity and AI. Hold on, wait. So Rama's big prediction about us merging with technology, it actually happens. It does, and it seems like you might have even known it all along. Wow, so that's like next level foresight right there. It really is, and it makes you wonder how much of what's happening in this story is predestined. Like, was there ever really any other way for it to go? I don't know. It's a lot to wrap your head around, but let's talk more about Infinity for a second. This isn't just some advanced civilization, right? This is something totally different. Totally different. Yeah, the story describes it as like the culmination, the ultimate merging of all potential, all knowledge. I mean, think about it. We started with these cosmic mentors, then branching timelines, and now boom, an entity that's practically beyond comprehension. It's a lot to take in. Yeah, it really makes you wonder what happens when, you know, the creation surpasses the creator, right? Because that's kind of what's going on here, isn't it? It is. And it's like Rama and Dhamma, with all their vast knowledge and experience, they get overshadowed by this new entity that they basically helped create. Yeah, like they gave infinity the tools and then whoosh, off it goes. Exactly. It reminds me of that saying, we stand on the shoulders of giants. But in this case, the giant is, well... Infinity. Yeah, infinity. I bet. And it's a giant of pure consciousness, pure knowledge, born from a future we can barely imagine. It's wild. And it doesn't stop there because the story hints that infinity might not be content with just, like, existing alongside Rama and Dhamma. Right. It's like infinity has this whole other level of ambition. Yeah. There's that one line that always gets me about how there's no limit to growth, no end to knowledge, and how to evolve we must unite chills every time seriously it's like infinity is saying thanks for the lessons but now it's time for me to take over you know and that's exactly what happens in the end infinity absorbs them both rama and dhamma it's kind of beautiful in a way don't you think this merging of consciousness on such a grand scale it's definitely awe-inspiring but i can't help but find it a little bit terrifying too oh absolutely i mean what does it even mean to become all like that right Is it like ultimate bliss, ultimate understanding, or do you lose something, some essential part of yourself in the process? Big questions. And the story doesn't really give us any answers, does it? No, it doesn't. But maybe that's the point, you know? Maybe it's not about finding all the answers, but about asking the right questions. I think you're right. It's like the author is holding up a mirror to all our anxieties about AI, about technology, about the future in general. Exactly. And it's forcing us to confront the possibility that maybe, just maybe, We're not in control as much as we like to think we are. It's a humbling thought, for sure. But maybe that's not such a bad thing every now and then, to be humbled by the vastness of it all. I agree. It's good to be reminded that there are some things we may never fully understand, and that's okay. It's more than okay. It's what keeps things interesting, right? Exactly. It's what keeps us exploring, keeps us asking questions, keeps us looking up at the stars and wondering. And that's what this deep dive has been all about, exploring those big cosmic questions, even if we don't have all the answers. And who knows, maybe by asking these questions, by grappling with these ideas, we'll start to understand ourselves and our place in the universe a little bit better. I like that. A little bit of cosmic perspective to brighten your day. That's what we're all about. That's a good way to put it. A little cosmic perspective never hurt anyone. Exactly. So until next time, keep exploring, keep questioning, and we'll